All right, welcome back to our journey through the book of Enoch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As usual, we're going to seek to align it up with the canon and the scriptures we know and love as best we can. Amen. 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 Continue to know them. Today we are in chapter 76. Great, yeah. Getting up yeah. there. Yeah. All right. So let me have my first reader read Enoch. Chapter 76, verses 1 through 5, please. At the ends of the earth, I saw 12 portals open to all the quarters of the heaven, from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. Three of them are open on the face, i.e. the east of the heavens, and three in the west, and three on the right, i.e. the south of the heaven, and three on the left, i.e. the north. And the three first are those of the east, and three are of the north and three after those on the left of the south and three of the west through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity and from those eight come hurtful winds when they are sent they bring destruction on all the earth and on the water upon it and on all who dwell there on it and everything which is in the water and on the land and the first wind from these portals, called the east wind, comes forth through the first portal, which is on the east, inclining towards the south. From it come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. Hallelujah. Okay, so here it is. We're talking about what's at the ends of the earth. You know, I remember, uh, you know, we spoke about the end of the earth before and how it related to the south pole, you know, and... You know, hey, what if there are 12 portals up there? Hmm. We'll never know because we can't go. We're not allowed. Hmm. Hmm. Good thing we have the book of Enoch, huh? Hallelujah. You know, so it speaks about 12 portals all open to all the quarters of heaven, which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. All right, it says, it speaks of the east wind. It said, from it, come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. So that's what comes from the east wind. That's the line that's with our, with our um, cannon. Um, wasn't quite supposed to look like this, but okay, we'll roll with it. Genesis 41, 27 says, And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them after our seven years, and the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. And so you know, this is, of course, the dream that Pharaoh had, and um, Yosef was interpreting the dream, you know, and <laughs> bless you. And so he was saying, you know, in, in an interpretation of the dream, the east wind spoke to seven years of famine, hmm. you know, which which uh, goes along with what was said, with that east wind come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. Hmm. All right, so that aligns pretty good. Then we have Exodus 14 21. It says, And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahuwah caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. So we see that it was indeed the east and east wind that parted the Red Sea. Awesome, right? You know, and again, you know. Supposed to, you know, drop drying things up and dry the path for Israel to cross the, um, the Red Sea. Um, so that was awesome. Then we have Ezekiel 17 10. It says, Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither when the east wind touches it? It shall wither in the furrows where it grew. So again, we see the east wind equated with drying stuff out with drought. And then we have Ezekiel 19, 12, which says, but she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground and the east wind dried up her fruit. Her strong rods were broken and withered. The fire consumed her. So, uh, and then we have one final one, Hosea 13, 15. It says, though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of Yahuwah shall come upon, come up from the wilderness and his spring shall become dry and his fountain shall be dried up. 
he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant things. So we see this this east wind is equated with drying stuff up with the drought. Now, that said, I did find a contra uh, well, I, I guess what you can say a contradiction, you know, um, in Exodus 12, I believe it's Exodus 12, 10, you know, uh, which speaks to Exodus 12, 10 um, actually speaks to the locusts being brought upon the land as one of the plagues during the time of uh, Moshe. Mm -hmm. And it speaks about an east wind bringing the locusts. Mm -hmm. Yet I don't see anything in this uh, in Enoch that speaks to the east wind bringing the locusts. Some of the other winds bring locusts, but I just didn't see anything. Some of the east wind bring locusts. Maybe the east wind only bring locusts one time, and that's when they brought it, you know, during the time of plague. I don't know. Maybe the east wind was plague wind, you know, that was for those 10 plagues. Again, I don't know. All I know is that it, the book of Enoch does not mention locusts with the east wind. <clears throat> it does not associate locusts with the east wind, yet the east wind is associated with locusts in the camp. Amen. All right. Enoch 76, verses 6 through 9. My next reading, please. And through the second portal in the middle comes what is fit. And from it there came, there come rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and do. And though, and through the third portal, which lies for the north, Come cold and drought, and after these come forth the south winds through three portals. Though the first portal of them inclining to the east come forth a high wind, and though the middle portal next to it there come forth fragrant smells, fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. And through the third portal lying in the west come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation. Hallelujah. So now we're dealing with the south winds. First we were dealing with the east winds, now we're dealing with the south winds. And one of the attributes of the south winds is it come forth as a hot wind. And this do in fact align with our canon. When we look at yo or a job if you prefer anybody need one you can always find one in the, in the word you know <laughs> you know it's uh chapter 37 verse 17 says how thy garments are warm when he quieted the earth by the south wind you know so we see that the south wind is equated with warmness with hotness right um also consider luke 1255 our messiah speaking it says and when you see the south wind blow he say there will be heat, and it come up to pass. You know, so they were able to discern the weather by which way the wind was blowing. You know, because the walk south wind was blowing, they knew, hey, it's gonna be warm tomorrow. You know, I'm gonna have to um, be more cognizant and see if I can do that. You know, that'd be an interesting experience, right? You know, uh, I, so uh, that's the south wind. It's gonna be warm tomorrow. Mm. Maybe that's what was going yesterday. Mm. It was mighty warm, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Enoch 76, 10, 11 it says, and after these, the north winds. So now we're dealing with the north winds. It goes on to say, from the seventh portal in the east come dew and rain, locusts and desolation. Mm. And from the middle portal come in a direct direction health rain and dew and prosperity. And through the third portal in the west come cloud and hoar frost and snow and rain and dew and locusts. You know, so now we're dealing with um, the north winds and it's speaking about it's gonna be snow and rain and hoar frost, you know, and cloud, you know. And so um, we have Sirach chapter 43, 20, which does align with this. It says when the cold north wind blow, and water is congealed into ice. It abides upon every gathering together of water and clothed the water as with a breastplate. 
that's a beautiful way to describe it. The, mm-hmm. You know, the water freezing over, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, um, but yeah, so it does align. Um, Enoch 76, 12. And after these things are the west winds. Through the first portal of joining the, the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost and from the middle portal come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing. Mm-hmm. And through the last portal, which adjoins the south, come uh, come forth drought and desolation and burning and destruction. And the 12 portals of the four quarters of, he- of the heaven are therewith completed. And all their laws and all their plagues and all their benefactions have I shown to thee, my son of Israel. Hmm. Yeah. So I couldn't find anything with the West Winds. It's not too much on the West Winds. The West Winds don't be blowing the scripture. You know, um, <laughs> so but I couldn't find anything. And in fact, that's it, chapter 76. So we're going to move on to chapter 77. Let me have my next reader read Enoch chapter 77, 1 through 5, please. In the first quarter is called the east because it is the first and the second. The south because the most high Elyon will descend there. Yea, they are in quite a special sense, will he who is blessed forever descend. And the west quarter is named the diminished. Because there are all the luminaries of the heaven wane and go down. And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. The first of them is for the dwelling of men. And the second contains seas of water, and the abysses, and forest, and river, and darkness, and clouds. And the third part contains the garden of righteousness. I saw seven high mountains higher than all the mountains which are on the earth. And thence comes forth hoar frost, and days, seasons, and years pass away. I saw seven rivers on the earth, larger than all the rivers. One of them coming from the west pours its waters into the great sea. Hallelujah. All right. So, speaks about the first quarter. It's called the east. You know, but um, what was really significant is spoke about the south. It's called the south because the most high will descend there. Yea, there in a quiet and special sense for he who is blessed forever descend. Interesting. Say, well, no. You know, and also in that fourth quarter named the north, it says that part contains the garden of righteousness. I thought that was pretty uh, interesting as well. You know, so you was ever wondering where it was. Now you got you got you got you got at least you got to start. You know where to start looking. Start looking to the north. Hmm. Enoch 77, 6 through 8, my next reader, please. And these two come from the north to the south. To the sea and pour their waters into the Yathesian Yathirian Sea in the east, and the remaining four come forth on the side of the north to their own sea, two of them to the Yathirian Sea, and two into the great sea, and discard themselves there, and some say into the desert. Seven great islands I saw in the sea and in the mountains, two in the mainland and five in the great sea. Hallelujah. So here it is. You know, we see that it um, even speaks about the Eritrean Sea, which is still around now today. You know, um, we have we have a member that sometimes comes that's from the region, you know. Uh, next time she comes. We're going to ask her about the Eritrean Sea. Somebody mm-hmm. mm-hmm. get that message to her. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it for chapter 77. So we're going to move on to chapter 78. You know. All right. Let me have my next reader read Enoch 78, 1 through 7, please. And the names of the sun are the following the first orders and the second, Thomas. 
and the moon has four names. The first name is Asanya. Asanya the second, Edwa the third, Dinesh. Dinesh, and the fourth, Are. Are. These are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and the size of the circumference of both is alike. In the circumference of the sun, there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than the moon. And in definite measures, it is transferred till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted. And they set and enter the portals of the west and make their revolution by the north and come forth through the eastern portals and the face of the heaven. And when the moon rises, one fourteenth part appears in the heaven. The light becomes full in her. On the fourteenth day, she accomplishes her light. And fifteen parts of the light are transferred to her till the 15th day when her light is accomplished according to the sign of the year. And she becomes 15 parts in the moon grows by the addition of the 14th part. Hallelujah. So talking about the phases of the moon, it continues in verses 8 through 12. It says, and in her waning, the moon decreases on the first day to 14 parts of her light and on the second to 13 parts of light. And on the third to 12, and on the fourth to 11, and the fifth to 10, and six to nine, on the seventh to eight, and on the eighth to seven, on the ninth to six, and on the tenth to five, and on the eleventh to four, and on the twelfth to three, and on the thirteenth to two, and on the fourteenth to half of a seven. And all her remaining light disappears wholly on the fifteenth. And in certain months, the moon has 29 days, and once 28. And Uriel showed me another law. When, the, when light is transferred to the moon and on which side it is transferred to her by the sun. Hmm. I thought that was interesting because, you know, it speaks to the light, actually, I mean, the moon actually reflecting the light of the sun. Hmm. See it um, worded it as being transferred to the moon, hmm. you know, uh, hmm. and it's interesting that they knew that way back when, right? Hmm. Um, you think they would just think that, you know, hey, you know, somebody turned the light on, you know, but no. Just because it was ancient, don't mean it was dumb, right? Mm -hmm. uh, verse 11, during all the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun. During 14 days, her light is accomplished in the heaven. And when she is in moon throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. Mm -hmm. Verses 13 through 16, my next reader, please. And on the first day, she is called the moon moon. For on that day the light rises upon her. She becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun sets in the west, and from the east she rises at night. And the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her, and the moon is seen over against the sun. On the west, whence the light of the moon comes forth, there again she wanes till all the light vanishes and all the days of the month are at an end. And her circumference is empty, void of light. In three months she makes of 30 days and at her time she makes three months of 29 days each in which she accomplishes her waning in the first period of time. And in the first portal for 177 days and in the time of her going out, she appears for three months of 30 days each, and for three months she appears of 29 each. At night, she appears like a man for 20 days each time, and by day she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her life. I thought that was pretty interesting. At night, she appears like a man for 20 days. Mm -hmm. And by day she appears like the heaven, and there's nothing else in saving for her life. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, I guess uh like a man speaks to being alone in the dark, huh? You know, say wow. Mm -hmm. All right, chapter 79, Enoch 79, 1 through 6. And now, my son, I have shown thee everything, the law of the stars of heaven completed. 
and he showed me all the laws of these for every day and for every season of bearing rule for every year and for its going forth and for the order prescribed to it uh, every month and every week and the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal for in this portal her light is accomplished and after that there is the beginning of the, of the waning and the waning which takes place in the first portal in the season till 177 days are accomplished reckoned according to weeks 25 weeks and two days she falls behind the sun in the order of the stars exactly five days in the course of one period when this place when this place which thou seest has been tra traversed such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which uriel the archangel who is their leader showed unto me all right hallelujah thank you uriel we're gonna move on to chapter eight yeah, my next read, read Enoch 81 through 5, please. And in those days, the angel of Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything. Enoch and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldst see the sun and his moon, and the leaders of the stars of the heaven, and all those who find them their task and times and departures. And in the days of the strange, the years shall be shortened, and the sea shall be tardy on the lands and fields, and all the things on the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in the time. And the land shall be kept back, and the heaven shall, shall withhold it. And in those days, the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time. The fruits of the earth shall be withheld in their time, and the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. And and in those days the sun shall be seen, and he shall return in the evening of the extremity of the great chariot in the west, and shall shine more brightly than the chords with the order of light. Hallelujah. All right. Now, we're through with the luminaries. And so Enoch is, you know, given a prophetic word here. And, you know, lest anyone forgot. You know, Enoch started out saying, you know, hey, these prophecies that I'm about to give you, these parables are pertaining not to your day and time, mm -hmm. but to those that's in the last days. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. So I think that makes this pretty crucial, mm -hmm. a pretty crucial word here. Mm -hmm. And we see that in verse two, it says in, in the days of the sinners. I think we're in the days of some sinners. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, you know, I just take a take a short look around and I think we're in the days of some sinners. Mm -hmm. The years shall be short and their seeds shall be tart on their land and fields and all things <coughs> of the earth shall alter and shall not appear in their time. We're talking about some heavy stuff now, right? Yeah. We're talking about some heavy stuff. It says all all the things of the earth shall alter and shall not appear in their time, and the rain shall be kept back, and the heavens shall withhold it. But you know what happens if it doesn't rain? That means famine, right? And it says in verse three, and in those days the fruits of the earth shall be backward. Wow! So the fruits of the earth shall be backward. So if they're backward, then that means that. Fruit is sprouting forth in the winter, and in the winter, there's no fruit. I mean, well, yeah, in the summer, there's no fruit. Yeah, y'all know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> I got dyslexic. Uh, yeah, but, you know, you get the picture. Everything's reversed. And it says the moon shall alter her order and not appear at her time. You know, and it says the sun shall shine more brightly than then, of course, with the order of light. They already talking about that. Yeah. Global warming, right? Yeah. Anyway. Um, Enoch 80, verses 6 through 8, it says, And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks. Even the stars, even the constellations will be altered and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the center. And the thoughts of those on earth shall err concerning them. 
and they shall be altered from their ways. Yea, they shall err and take them to be gods. And evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all. This is heavy stuff, right? But do our canon align with any of this? Let us consider Matthew Yahoo 24, 22. Does it speak about the days being shortened? It sure does. It says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Also, Mark 13, 20, and except that the Adonai has shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, we have sort of day. Praise Yahweh. Yeah. And praise him for his elect. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So it says that the days shall be shortened. You know, so this absolutely agrees with what Enoch is saying. You know, everything's going to be altered. You know, everything's going to be altered. You know, and so our canon do speaks about them being off to the days being short, but it doesn't stop there. You know, I just figured since we was in this vein, we might as well see it, you know, all the way through. Mm -hmm. Revelations 8, 12, and 13, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it. Is that not the days being short? And the night likewise, and I beheld and, be, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Amen. So we see that the days truly will be shortened, and that they will be shortened during the time of the seven trumps. Amen. What's the president of the uh, United States, man? Mm. What is it? Is it Trump? <laughs> Say lie. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Coincidence? Maybe. You know, I don't know. I, but the man name is Trump, right? <laughs> and he is the most powerful man in the, on the planet right now, right? I'm just saying. Mm. I'm just saying, I you know, well, yeah, well, right now he is, so they say, you know, but he's, he's definitely in the running, we'll put it that way, you know, nothing else. Amos 8, 9, and it shall come to pass in that day, say about him now, Yahuwah, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Is that not a shortened day? Sure is. We got two witnesses in our canon that speaks to the days being short, even as he not said, right? Mm -hmm. Things gonna be off. You know, yes, Yahoo 13 9. Behold, the day of Yahoo cometh. See, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about doing the day of Yahoo. You know, I want you to understand that a day is as a what? Yeah. A thousand yeah. years, and a thousand years is as yeah. one day. Messiah died how many years ago? About 2,000 years. About two days ago. What Hosea say? Hosea say they will rise on the third day. Amen? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Behold, the day of Yahuwah come. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate, he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of. Yes, Yahoo 13 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be dark and his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Sounds pretty similar, right? Sounds like a progression from going from, from a shortened day to no day. Also, Yoel 315. 
the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahoo 4, 21 through 28. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trump? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens, and they had no light. Woo! You just said something right there. No sun above, no moon, no stars. No light. And I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens, and they had no light. Praise Yah for the elect. They had no light. What did Yahshua call us to be in the earth? Lights. What are the ecclesias depicted as? Candles. Lights. Both of you correct. So how long? Shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. Don't you know a lot of people don't know y'all? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know y'all. A lot of people who claim to love y'all don't know y'all. They are silent children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens, and they had no light. We were just talking about this light not too long ago. We were talking about how the light was, you know, sick, uh, signify something else. Somebody tell me what that light signified? Right. Absolutely. That light signified righteousness. So I want you to understand what's being said. I beheld in the earth. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens. And they had no righteousness. The sun shall be darkened. The moon shall cease to give forth her light. Her light. The stars shall be dark. There's no light. There's no righteousness. Now can't you see how Yahshua is saying the love of many will wax cold. Verse 24. And I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled and all the hills moved lightly. And I beheld, and lo, there was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of Yahuwah and by his fierce anger. For thus, say, for thus have Yahuwah said, the whole land shall be desolate. Yet will I not make a fool in it. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it I have purposed it and I will not repent neither will I turn back from it that's some pretty heavy stuff right there that's what we have to look forward to see I don't want nobody to be going out there and, and, and looking for the sun to disappear and yeah, looking for the moon you know, not to show itself. You know, looking for the stars, you know, to be rolled up like a scroll. Mm -hmm. See, because you're not going to find that. But what you will find 
is that righteousness will disappear from off the planet. Mm -hmm. Say mm -hmm. Chapter 81, verses 1 through 5. My next reader, please. And he said unto me, Observe, Enoch, these heavenly tables, and read what is written thereon, and mark every individual fact. And I observed the heavenly tables, and read everything which was written thereon, and understood everything, and read the book of all the deeds of mankind, and of all the children of flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations. And forthwith I blessed the great Adonai, the King of glory forever, in that he has made all the works of the world, and extolled Yahuwah because of his patience and blessed him because of the children of men. And after that I said, Blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness, concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written, and against whom no day of judgment shall be found. And those seven holy ones brought me and placed me on the earth before the door of my house and said to me. Hallelujah. Okay, so we have Enoch, you know, and he's looking at the heavenly tablets and observing them and reading everything that was written in them. And he understood everything that was in the heavenly tablets, you know, and read the deeds of mankind. You know, now he says in verse four, and after that, I said, blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written and against whom no day of judgment shall be fine. Mm. You know, this is uh this is really a blessing to die in righteousness. Mm. Yeah. You know, I can't speak so being such a time. You know, uh it doesn't look like it's going to be in here. <laughs> um it was in there when I left, but not there now. <laughs> Go figure. Well, Enoch 81, 6 through 10 says, Declare everything to my son Methuselah and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of Yahuwah, for he is their creator. One year we will leave thee with thy son, till thou givest thy last commands, that thou mayest teach thy children and record it for them, and testify to all thy children, and in the second year they shall take thee from their midst. Let thy heart be strong, for the good shall announce righteousness to the good, and the righteous with the righteous shall rejoice and shall offer congratulations to one another. But the sinners shall die with the sinners, and the apostate go down with the apostate. And those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men and be taken away on account of the doings of the godless. And in those days, they ceased to speak with me. And I came to my feet, blessing Yahuwah of the world. I hear it. And then, you know, our canon does align with what Enoch is saying. It's found in Revelation 14, 12, and 13. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Adonai from henceforth. Yea, saith the Ruach, that they may rest from their labors and their works through power. So you see, you know, that does line pretty well with Enoch 81, 4, and after that I said, blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness. See, that's what you want to die. You want to die. When you die, you want to die in righteousness and goodness. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can't choose when we're going to die, but we certainly can choose how we're going to die all the time. You can choose to die in righteousness and goodness no matter when it comes. You know, and you want to die in righteousness and goodness because concerning them, there is no book of unrighteousness written. And against them, no day of judgment shall be found. You know? yeah. Hallelujah. You know, and those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men and be taken away on account of the doings of the godless, you know, so I want you to know that you know the wicked 
you know, they're gonna, you know, I don't know, put it bluntly, they're gonna kill us. But, but yeah, he's gonna raise us up. It's gonna be a blessing to be killed at that time. Yeah. You know, as long as you're in righteousness and goodness. You know, and so this is why we see in Revelation, you know, 14, 12, says, here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua, righteousness and goodness. The commandments of Elohim, righteousness, the faith of Yahushua, goodness. Amen? Amen. All right. Chapter 82, verses 1 through 4. My next reader, please. And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee. And I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these. So preserved, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations. This wisdom, namely, that passes their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear that they may learn this wisdom. And it shall please, and it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven. Entering into and departing from the portals for 30 days with the heads of thousands of the orders of the stars together with the four which are intercollect intercollected collect thank you <laughs> which divide the four portions of the year which lead them and enter with them four days all right continue going verses five to ten only to them men shall be at fault and i reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year yea men shall be at fault and recognize them and not recognize them accurately, for they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded thereon. But ever, one in the first quarter, and one in the third, and one in the fourth, and one in the sixth, and the year is completed in 364 days. And the account thereof is accurate and the recorded, um, and the recorded reckoning thereof exact for the luminaries and the monks and the festivals and the years and days as Uriel showed and revealed to me, to whom the Adonai of the whole creation of the world has subjected the host of heaven. And he has power over night and day and in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the powers of the heaven which revolve in their circular chariots. And these are the orders of the stars which set in their places and in their seasons and festivals and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at the time at the times and their orders in the seasons and in their months and in the periods of dominion and their positions. Verses 11 to 15, our next reader, please. Therefore, leaders will divide the four parts of the of the year first, and after them the 12 leaders of the order to divide the months. And for the 360 days, there are heads over the over thousands who divide the days. And for the four intercalary days, there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. And these heads over thousands are intercalated, intercalated uh, between the leader and the and between leader and leader, each behind a station. But their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year, which are ordained. Mikhail, Hil Hilmelech, and Milajal and Narel, and the names of those who lead them. And Donarel, and Ish, Jasael, and Iromel, these, these three follow the leaders of the orders 
and there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders, which follow those leaders of stations that divide the four parts of the year. In the beginning of the year, Melkajel rises first and rules, who is named Tamael and son. In all the days of his dominion, whilst he bears rule, are 91 days. Hallelujah. Verses 16 through 20. Our next reader, please. And these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion. Sweat and heaving comes, and all the trees bear fruit, and leaves are produced on all the trees, and the harvest of the wheat, and the rose flowers, and all the flowers that come forth in the field. But the trees of the winter season become winter, and these are the name of the leaders which are under them. Barakel, Jezalibazel, and another who is added at, at the head of a thousands, called Ilyujazah, and in the days of the dominion of his leader are at his end. And the next leader after him, Alamelech, <laughs> who one names uh, the sun, the sunning, the shining sun, and all the days of his light are ninety-one days. And these are the signs of his days on the earth, blowing heat and dryness, and the trees ripen their fruit and produce all their fruits ripe and ready. And the sheep pair become pregnant and all the fruits of the earth are gathered in, and the days that are in the field and the wine press, and these things take place in the days of his dominion. These are the names and the orders of the leaders of those heads of the thousands, Gidel, Jal, Keel, and Hael, Hael, and the name of the head of the thousands that is added to him, Asaphel, and the days of his dominion are at the end. Hallelujah. You know, yeah. so this is just really a, a recap of, of, um, of the, uh, the seasons and, and how they go through it, except for it's just naming all of them, which we couldn't look up the names or I couldn't look up the names. Um, so that is Enoch 82. That is all we have for today. Pray it was a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.